All right, we're very excited here to be sitting with a retired deputy chief of the Los Angeles Police Department, Stephen Downing. He's a board member of Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, the co-author and a member of the executive committee of the Regulate Marijuana Like Wine Initiative in California. And he's joining us today from California. Uh, thank you, Stephen, for being with us. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. I want to go in depth about the Regulate Marijuana Like Wine Initiative, and we'll get to that. But before that, uh, another piece of news that we should discuss is the fact that you asked the number one question in the recent Obama YouTube forum, uh, the number one video question, I should stipulate, uh, very similar to a question we asked from Normal uh, about marijuana prohibition and the need to you know, change our attitudes, change our laws about this, especially with respect to the American public's polling on it that now support legalization more than they oppose it. Tell us about your experience in putting that video together and your reaction to President Obama's snub of the question. Well, we put the video together, uh, <clears throat> as you may know, last year, uh, Obama, a member of LEAP, asked a question, and, and Obama answered the question, and he said, he said that he thought that it was time to begin uh, uh, a public discussion uh, uh, about marijuana. And uh, so an entire year has passed, and, and the only thing that occurred uh, in California uh, and uh, a few other states is that the Obama administration began raiding uh, medical marijuana dispensaries uh, after promising that that wouldn't happen. And so that's not a that's not a discussion, in my opinion. That's a, a tyrannical behavior on the, on the part of the federal government. So we were very very pleased that uh, my video question uh, uh, was at the top of the list, and we fully expected that we would get some discussion, especially in light of the fact that uh, the Gallup poll had shown uh, the majority of Americans believe that marijuana should be legalized. And in the West, it was 55%. So we fully thought that we would have a discussion and uh, really get something moving. And it was completely ignored. Now, they say that Google uh, and uh, YouTube uh, uh, are the ones that chose the questions for discussion with, uh, with the president. Uh, so we have to accept uh, that as fact. But... Uh, uh, the bottom line is is that it was not discussed. It was the number one question. Uh, if they're going to have a contest, have a contest. And uh, we were up there, and yet it was completely ignored. And then I think the most disappointing thing about the whole thing, maybe they, you, you could give them the excuse that there was other priorities in their judgment, there were other priorities to discuss, but then they had, like, a, of over f five minutes of discussion about nonsensical things like tennis and parties and 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 uh, uh, you know family affairs and it was it was very disappointing especially when you have something so serious mm -hmm. because the prohibition of marijuana in this country is just hugely damaging to the social fabric of this country it's hugely damaging to to our criminal justice system that uh, doesn't have enough money to really deal with serious crimes and yet we continue to deal with what was it in 210 uh, 850,000 arrests for marijuana across this country the prisons are overflowing and and but our prosecutors will say well people aren't in prison for marijuana uh, possession and the fact is what they don't tell you is that pr people are in prison because two-thirds of prison populations are for parole violations mm -hmm. and parole violations come as a result of a blood test where you got a little bit of THC after 30 days of, uh, of use so uh, it was very disappointing that uh, this this important question was not addressed by our president especially and and some people might say that this is a uh, a cheap shot but i don't intend it to be a cheap shot president obama knows what it's like to use marijuana i don't i've never used it in my life my concern is the damage of prohibition but he knows and he talks about it in the context of a health problem 
And that's how we should be dealing with it if if it is a health problem. And I think most of that is skewed uh, statistics because of mandatory sentencing of, of situations. So he's been there, and he knows. He's been in the university environment. And because he didn't get caught, he was able to become the president of the United States. Had he been caught, like so many thousands and thousands and thousands of other young people, he would have been denied access to an education, access to employment, access to educational grants. He would have been denied that. And there are thousands of young people in this country that are denied that because of these marijuana laws. And, and so that's why I was so disappointed that this this uh, man, our president, will not deal with an issue that is contemporary to him mm -hmm. as, a, as, as a, you know, a 50-year-old uh, man who has been through that. Well said. And, uh, you know, this is, it, it is so troubling. And when not only the leap question gets over 4,000 votes on the, on the, uh, the contest, but 18 of the top 20 and 105 of the top 160 questions that were voted on all had to do something to do with marijuana legalization or drug policy in general. And I, I imagine that part of the reason, and, and this has been written about in Slate magazine and a couple of other outlets I've been reading that have reported on this, that in Washington and in the halls of power, there's still this giggle factor about bringing up marijuana law reform. It's been so associated with, you know, Cheech and Chong stereotypes. How do we get past that giggle factor and, and get these politicians to start taking this seriously? Well, I, I think we're doing it. Uh, uh, one of LEAP's uh, major objectives, as you, as you probably know, is we have a very large uh, speakers bureau made up of criminal justice professionals, police, prison guards, uh, prison warden, uh, we have a prison warden on our board, prosecutors, judges, uh, uh, who have uh, woken up to this, to this problem and we're out educating the public. And if you look at the polls as time has passed, uh, uh, it shows that we're having an impact. The public is, is becoming more and more aware of how foolish prohibition is. Uh, the public is finally learning uh, uh, what they learned in the 30s when we uh, when we did away with the prohibition of alcohol, and to that point, uh, a, a, as you know, I'm uh, uh, one of the authors of, of regulate marijuana like wine, and we uh, uh, engaged a poll that was just released uh, yesterday. Now, backing up, last October, the the uh, uh, Gallup poll showed that Californians actually in the West, was 55% in favor, and uh, across the country was 50%. Well, we did a poll on Regulate Marijuana Like Wine, which is the name of our initiative. Our initiative has a pretty harsh uh, title and summary that was written by the, uh, the uh, Attorney General's office, and uh, because it says legalization. Right. And, and even with the legalization, we, we had a, uh, uh, a 50, I think it was 55 or 56 percent approval, uh, just by looking at the harsh language. But after the, uh, uh, people who were polled heard, uh, what this initiative did in terms of how it was regulated and controlled at the state level, just like wine, and about, about every question you can ask about our initiative uh, that might have a problem associated with, you just say, just like wine. Well, uh, the poll revealed, uh, after hearing about our initiative, a 62% approval rate. But what's really interesting about this poll is that uh, they were asked... Uh, they said that 71, oh, well, 71 percent said that local law enforcement agencies spend too much time and money enforcing marijuana laws. And the legislative analyst, who is completely independent, after our initiative was passed through the AG, did an examination 
And they said that if this became law, it would most likely save tens of millions of dollars in criminal justice costs and generate hundreds of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions in revenues. So uh, it's a strong initiative. Here's the biggest number that came out of this poll. The poll was conducted by Fairbanks, Maislin, Mullen, Metz, and Associates, a very prestigious polling firm. They found that 80% of the respondents agreed to this statement. State and federal drug laws are outdated and have failed. Therefore, we need to take a new approach that makes sense for today. 80%. Wow. Well, now you ask that question about Washington. <laughs> I call it the Beltway Bubble. Somebody, you know, everybody campaigns outside and they make all these outlandish statements and promises, and then they cross the Beltway and something absorbs them. And they live in this bubble that is not real to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. The people suffer under, as a result of their ignorance. The prohibition is so valuable to so many people in the Beltway. $1.2 trillion spent in the last 40 years? Well, that's a lot of power. And the real shame of this prohibition, of this money, as you may know, when the four AGs in uh, California raided the dispensaries, they sent ahead $72 million to local law enforcement mm -hmm. to help them do that job. Well, regulate marijuana like wine has a provision in it that no state official, no state law enforcement officer, no sheriff, nobody that is in this state, if this becomes law, can support any marijuana enforcement effort by the federal government. They can't touch it. Bravo. Another thing it does... It supports our laws legally because if the federal government tries to move against us, we have a we have a legal defense fund as a result of this law because it requires the state attorney general to defend our marijuana laws in federal court. Mm -hmm. And we also believe that the Carol Ann Bond decision that came down last June 11th from the uh, 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 Supreme Court will give us standing in court. The Carol Ann Bond decisions, as you know, the prohibition of alcohol came about as a result of what? We did an amendment to the That's Constitution. Yeah. When we ended it, we had to do another amendment to the Constitution because that's the way our Constitution is structured. So the question arises, how did the federal government do the Controlled Substances Act without going through an amendment to the Constitution? Well, they based it on the fact that they made an international treaty. That's why they said, that's why they made that law. Well, in the Carol Ann Bond case, the United States Supreme Court said unanimously that if Congress wants to make law as a result of a treaty, an international treaty, and that law is in conflict with the Constitution, then you've got to make an amendment. So we think this new Carol Ann Bond case is, is going to help us change the landscape. Mm -hmm. And uh, medical marijuana is in such trouble legally in California, so many court cases, and it's going to be here. And our initiative says it changes nothing, to, it changes nothing about our medical marijuana law. However, it is a safety net because yes. if this passes and medical marijuana laws go under and everybody's working hard to make them under, this baby is bulletproof. Mm -hmm. I just, I know it's bulletproof. And one of the reasons I took part in, in uh, authoring this, when they asked me aboard, I had worked on Proposition 19. And I believe that Proposition 19 did an enormous job of educating the public and removing a lot of the myths about marijuana. But Proposition 19 had problems structurally. 
that I think caused us to lose. I participated in writing this, this, this initiative, Regulate Marijuana Like Wine. We removed those problems. We, we used that experience. So yeah. I think it's bulletproof. It's going to uh, force the state to uh, support us legally against the federal government. It's going to prohibit uh, the federal government from gaining any resources or, or diverting our police officers uh, from their regular duties in favor of marijuana. And it's, it's just solid as a rock. Yeah, I, I really like it. And, and when you were talking about the polling and you ask people about legalization, you get about 55. You ask them about, you know, regulate marijuana like wine, you get a much greater amount. I think that shows something in the framing. And I think what it shows is that when you say legalization to people, they think on the shelves at the 7-Eleven. Right. They think, oh, my God, you know, it's going to be totally available to everyone. Uh, it's a scary term to people. When you say regulate, not only does it give people the feeling of control, but it also highlights the situation we have now is unregulated. It's out of control. And I also like that you're saying like wine. I mean, there's been other proposals that say like alcohol, but that puts you in the rum and the whiskey and the, you know, hard alcohol territory. Like right. wine gives it that, um, gives it a classy feel and it gives it a social feel and it, and it puts marijuana, I think, in, in a place where, you know, and you say you've never used it. I have. Uh, I'll tell you, socially, that is what it feels like. It feels like a glass of wine that you share with friends, a bottle of wine you share with friends. So kudos to you on a fantastic title. Well, thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, as we go uh, here, we're speaking again with uh, Stephen Downing. He's a retired deputy chief of the LAPD. It's the Regulate Marijuana Like Wine Initiative. Tell folks how they can get involved and how they can help support. Well, you can go to our website, www.regulatemarijuanalikewine.com. You can read the initiative. You can read the testimonies. Uh, we got many videos, support for many people. You can download petitions if you live in California and help us gather petitions. And most of all, you can donate. Uh, we need money to get our signatures. We, we have to get some of our signatures professionally, and we're against the timeline. We need a lot of help. Uh, we have this poll out now, so uh, 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 look at the poll. Uh, if, if you help us get this on the ballot, you help us get it on the ballot, it's going to win, and you're going to be behind a winner. So that's that's my message. Go to www.regulatemarijuanalikewine.com and uh, give us a helping hand. Stephen Downing, thank you so much for being a part of this, being on the executive committee and co-authoring Regulate Marijuana Like Wine. And, again, thanks also for the uh, question you got in front of President Obama that never got answered, but thanks for doing it anyway. And uh, uh, also want to remind folks, check out Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, com or leap.cc. Either way, you're going to get there. You'll get great speakers that are available, like Stephen Downing, like all the people we visit with here at Normal Show Live. And Stephen Downing, thanks so much for joining us here on the show. We appreciate it. You're very welcome. I enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye-bye.